Go ahead and play doubles again like you just did for fun. But you're not studying. Same tempo, kind of where you just were. You were turning higher and you were rotating. Right. I get it because, first of all, as Richard Wilson would say, you know, if I started to play again, I'd probably play traditional. You see, he enjoyed the fact that you could never quite get the two hands to sound identical. But the goal is to try to get right already better. Now you're playing by ear. And he, he, he enjoyed that. And also, there's something interesting about having a whole other set of properties. Yeah. You can consider in terms of developing your ability to play. <clears throat> so there's that. Now, I, you're talking about, you know, my, my jazz gig and that I'm booking and playing. Uh, and I asked you, what is the pinnacle of what is a jazz tune performance? When does that tune, and, and you know, Jazz, you know, there are there might not be absolutes. Maybe, maybe not. That's another discussion. But typically, where where does that thing really peak? What is the zenith of of playing jazz to in terms of where the thing the improvisation? Right, because we're we're you know there's ebbs and tides to music. And uh, what did what did Monk say? Monk said that it's the it's the bridge that makes the whole tune, which I think is true. You know, when I'm writing, that bridge is so important. But just in general terms, at what point does a jazz tune peak? I think peaks at the bridge, right? I suppose. No. I'm going to, okay, so and this is why I want you and, and my students to be playing as much jazz as possible because you'll learn so much about music. So what what Dick Wilson would say, just check this out for just a sec because that might hum over what I'm saying. And I, I think this is relevant, it has some pertinence with regards to, you know, to the part of the lesson. Uh, D Dick was saying, you know, Kevin, I was, uh, I was playing with a, you know, a, a horn band and uh, I took my solo, you know, live in front of a big audience. Uh, I took my solo and uh, I was playing and I don't know how many choruses I played. And when I came out, bam, the whole band came back in with me and the audience went, Whoa! Yeah. Because in jazz, what we're doing is we're obfuscating the one, so it's con to confuse the listener. And and to to impro uh, w w what you're doing is you're improvising, and you're challenging the other musicians because they have to keep their place. And you might be playing something that isn't landing where they're landing, and then, but they know where they are in the music. That was Jim Blackley, the master teacher I studied with in Toronto. And and he would have a blues tune uh, on his turntable back in the day, and he would just drop the needle. He would go, "Where are you in the in that twelve bar blues?" And you'd have to know, right? You have to know where you are in the tune. The most important thing in jazz is the form. Otherwise, it's just BS. It's not real. Now we all get lost once in a while, and and the gig is you have to find your find your place. There are famous jazz records where people get lost, and some of the and, and what happens is they find their way back, and that's sometimes where the real magic occurs, right? But you've got it. You've got to always be searching for the full. You've got to know where you are in the tune. And so what Dick was saying is he was playing the solo. And, and when I'm playing a solo, you know, I'm playing around, I'm trying to play the melody, I'm hearing the melody, I'm hearing the form, I'm hearing the tune. And it's just drums. There's no, you're trying to, you know, that's the challenge of drums. They don't, they're not melodic that way. 
And so you're trying to create patterns and tonalities so people can hear where you are in the tune. And the audience, they're really, they're not musicians. They're like, I don't know what's happening. What's he doing? Everyone seems to know what's happening. And then when you come out at the end of your solo, at the beginning of the head, and the whole band comes with you. So in other words, the audience is completely in the dark and full, realizes something special just happened. That's what you're going for. That's what happens when the whole band is hearing the tune. Now, if the singer doesn't come back in right at the top uh, yeah. and they let the band vamp, vamp, well, sometimes if it's a confusing form, that's cool. Great singers will sometimes do that. Everyone, you know, but the idea is the singer is part of the band. <laughs> They're supposed to come back in, boom, when you get to the end of your solo. And, and so that's what I was talking about. Okay, so. Okay. And so that's why I want you to practice soloing all the time so that you can start to play tunes and solo. And maybe the other musicians, depending on how good they are, will know where you are, depending on how good you are to help them understand where you are in the tune. You will you will start to navigate this thing called, you know, jazz. That's why it's so important. We're not just playing time, you know, and hearing a chorus and a bridge in a pop tune, which is totally cool. I'm totally not putting that down. I'm just saying it's different. Yes. yes. Okay. And it takes more work, right? Okay. So we were looking at uh, we we're looking at the rough, right? You have the rough out. I want you to have your your library, your Spivak library. Yeah, I can see it. Look, it's just hidden in the camera, but <laughs> well, because we don't want it in the way of the shot. But I want you to be able to see it. Dang it. Okay. So I think we got you up to something like what? Why don't you just put the metronome? I think we got you up to like seventy-two. Just just play it without a metronome. Just go ahead and play alternating drags for me or alternating roughs. your left is better than your right. Yeah. Well, do you, you, you know why? Do you know what's happening right now? This is why it's happening right now. This is why I wanted you to split the screen so that you can see yourself. Go ahead and play at that speed and watch yourself in the screen so you can see what I see is happening right now. Freeze, freeze, freeze. Oh, it's, yeah, you fixed it. Now, did you notice? Because it looks better now. Try again, play again, and watch yourself. Really be cognizant of what you're seeing. I thought you were going to speed it up. Speed it up. There it is. Look, watch your right. It's 
it's all getting better. That's for sure. Okay. Again, we are just chipping away at this thing. You're right, it's up in the air. Your left, your left is better at stopping down. Work on my left because I'm used to doing it like that. Or like. So now we, we could or we could not work on the essence of this particular problem. And that would mean that we'd have to look at your downstroke. Right? I know, I know. Show me a downstroke and you're right. See, you're not doing that when you play. Interesting. So you just need me to reinforce it. So that's better, isn't it? So we're, we're moving around the Richard Martinez fixed point in the universe, right? I don't know if that error will show up in the recording, but I'll move it. Okay, so we're moving around the fixed point in the universe. Right? And then we're going to cock our wrist and get to the floor. Let's see. Nah, you're see, you're you're only kind of coming up to here. You get this part. This part looks pretty good. Now cock your wrist. No, cock your wrist. Look, look, watch. I'm coming up to right here on my head. So we're coming up. We're gonna cock that high. We have to come up. There is a proportion to right, and then we're gonna cock our wrist. That arm come to the floor. Now, before you go to play, show me the floor. Okay. See, I don't think you're feeling this, I, which I get. Stick is just hanging kind of as plumb as possible. Hanging as plumb as possible. All right. Notice you're in half turned over. If you are really let everything relax, then you're going to bring it up. Going up. To rotate into a palm down position where you can't see the corner of your thumbnail, according to Richard Wilson. See, now we have the floor. Show me the floor. Are you sure that it, once you decide that's the floor, that's where you have to end up? Because then we're going to go around that, right? And then we're going to try to come back to that. Do it again. Come on, cock your wrist. I want to see this as you cock your wrist. Now in real time, we're not going to be waiting at the top very long. We're coming up, it's one smooth uncoiling of the thing as you come down. Come on, cock the wrist. There, better. You're not doing that when you play the stroke. Do that in your left real quick to make sure that you have that. Try not to wait at the top too much, even though remedially it's probably helpful. OK, see your left. You're always ragging on your left. It works. It's. And Murray would say that Murray would say, actually, what hand are you right or left handed? I was born left handed, but I got switched to right. So all bets were off with me. But he said, well, typically if the right handed people, their left comes along more quickly and vice versa. Whatever's going on. Your left is is working pretty well. Now go ahead and play the stroke. No metronome and see if you can get the bead to stop down. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. You didn't you didn't find your floor to begin with. You bl completely blew it off. I get it. I'm coming at you, right? Hey, that's you. But what? Oh, okay, now, but here's what you did when you went to play. You started with the beads on the surface and within. Like you, you were ready to play. It's like, OK, yeah, I'm going to. No, 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 no. You have to have your flo floor. Now you can play. We're not ready to play here. We're not ready to play over here. Not ready to play here. Or we're not ready to play now. We're 
should learn to be patient and do this. I know it's a drag. I, I had to learn how to be patient and do that. Okay. There, now you're ready to play. Now you can make a downstroke and maybe come back to that place. Oh, you're not cocking enough. Gotta let that whole thing really go. Comes up and then it, oh, everything collapses. There, that's different, isn't it? A little different. Yeah, the whole arm unravels. If you really cock your wrist and not push and do a small turn and shove down like that. Good, man. Okay, so your throw really is improving. That should calm you down. Can you do that? Now go ahead and play the alternating drag. Watch your right. Look, it's in the air. It's not coming to the floor. Nope, it's not quite at the floor, is it? Show me the floor in your right. This is the shit. Pardon me. This is the stuff that we all go through. I went through this. So you're not exempt. No matter how smart you are, how talented you are, to some extent, you're going to have to go through this stuff like everybody else. You're almost at the floor there. You, you don't want to shove it and force it. You want to feel that floor. Feel what it feels like, Raph. Here's one of the things, here's one of the ways that I got it. I really took the time to feel this. What does this really feel like? What does this, if this is your natural state of rest, it's the most comfortable position that your body or my body, your body might be slightly different, your build, but you're going to find your place of rest. Okay, what does this feel? What does the position of this feel like? What does the stick feel like in my hand? I meditate on this. I meditate on it. What what does my upper arm feel like? Rough. Can I feel my arm hanging, touching my body? What do I feel? What do I feel here? This is the floor. Now I want to go up. I want to go up, leading with the wrist, and leave the bead down. Okay, I feel the grip here. The grip has I can feel falcon potential, the whole thing. Now I'm gonna cock my see I didn't even need to look. I'm I'm kinda kinda back where I was. Where it's always a work in progress for all of us. You're more closer to the floor. Now I wanna also try not to wait at the top. Come up the just let me get to the top. Wait, turn and let everything collapse. Turn higher. Come on, really cock that wrist. Yeah, come on now, did you come to the floor? Wait and meditate on it again. You just keep coming back up. You spend all this time rolling through the air and not feel the most important thing. The floor. There. Make a strike and meditate on You're not real. Are you? It's a different floor now. You're higher. Where are you going to start? You have to decide. Yeah. OK, that's where the floor is. That's what it feels. Wait there. You don't want to. Yeah, there you go. Go ahead and try it again. Now, all the it kind of came down after, right? We're just supposed to come right to the foot. Pretty good. Now, all that's happening is we're going. Right. Playing a double. Double. Throw. So I'm just this speed. What am I doing? Double. Right. So it's not even an upstroke. Double. Pro. Double. I'm playing, but I'm turning. I'm turning from parallel. No, I'm turning from parallel. But it's not an upstroke. I'm turning from parallel. Do I the floor so That's where I'm turning from. I'm turning from. Parallel there. I don't turn to the ceiling. I'm just turning down. There you go. Now come on, make a throw. Come on, a big throw. Cock, cock your wrist to the ceiling. Yeah, you're feeling the floor. You turn to the ceiling for your double, which is okay, but I suggest maybe nope. You just yanked it up. So you don't want to feel the floor. You're not. You're not recognizing the importance of the floor yet. Nope. You're just yanking it up. I want to double with no upstroke from there. Now you can wait, feel the floor, go one up. Come on, cock your wrist more, but that was pretty good. Double, feel, nope, oh, you didn't feel the floor, you just yanked it right up. 
wait, wait. Yeah, from the, you're not going to turn to the ceiling. Do it again. You turned a little to the ceiling, it was still pretty nice. You, you don't have to come up yet. Feel the floor. Do it again. Don't even come up. Feel the floor, don't you? Feel it. There you are. There it is. Ta-da. Now come on up. When you're ready, come on up. Feel the floor. Go around a fixed point. Caught your... Feel the floor. Play a double. Nope, you yanked it up. You didn't feel the floor. We're too slow. It's not an upstroke. Now you can go up. It's just hard to, to do the double without, yeah, without raising it a little bit. But you've done it successfully more than once. Now go on up. Cock a little more, but much better. Came up right away. Yeah. Do it in the other hand. That's much better. Up. Up, up, you lifted it up. There it is. Now you can go around the fixed point and perfect. Can you put the hands together and do that? <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, it's, now you understand it's completely doable. You, if you can do it with one hand, remember, it's a single handed drumming. If you can do it with one hand, it's only a matter of you spending enough time with it to be able to accomplish it in both. Uh, instead of turn from there for a double. No, no, you're gonna, okay. Oh, no, no, for, I, what? <laughs> I have to think of what, 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 what am I teaching you here? Okay, you're right. So one hand has to raise, right? So it's gonna be, it's gonna be this, isn't it? It's gonna start like this. Good, 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 good. Yeah, it's gonna start like, it's gonna start with the motion setting up for the throw around a fixed point. And then that hand's gonna play the double. Like that. Go ahead and just do it one way. Just feel that. See, find the floor. It's, you're not on the floor, you're on the surface. There's the floor. Ah, serious. Go ahead. Right, it's gonna come around. Ah, almost. Come on, you don't have to turn up in the left. You don't have to turn up in the left. You already showed you can do it. There it is. Go the other way. Go the other way. Well, you don't have to lift up. Where's the floor in the right? You're below the floor. It's dipping after your double. Nope, it dipped. Just in the right, play a double. And don't dip. Like that. There it is. It's almost like, didn't Dick Wilson, it has a little bit here. The pad is set up differently because I'm, I've set it up for matched. And I don't really think this is, this isn't angled enough, but anyway. There's a little bit of a, it almost feels like you're just lowering the stick to the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. But you have to, so the whole stick, it feels like the stick is doing this. It has some of that quality. Yeah. Right? There you go. So you can do it. So now go ahead and play a left, left down stroke as your right does that. No, the other way. It's the other way that gave you a problem. There's your floor on the right. Oh. Dipped, right dipped, it just didn't lower and come, didn't come back to the floor. Dip, right dipped a little. There you go. There you go, now go the other way. Oh, right dipped a little, lost the floor a little. There you go, other way, you're getting it, dude. There you go, other way. Now the other way, other way, other way, other way. Other way, a little faster. Other way. Other way. Come on, keep the same motions, just a little faster. Other way. Other way. Other way. Other way. Faster. Don't lose the floor in the right. Don't lose it. That's all it is. Okay. Yeah, I know you mean. Much, much better. Much better. The stopping up here, this is how, instead of stopping here, that's how inefficient you are. You've traveled all this way. In drummer language, that's like traveling to the moon or something. <laughs> Don't do that. Cool, man. I, I think I think part of the exercise that I should do is just like just do the double like this. Just just practice that for them, just to feel that. I will write that down. And what we're going to do is we're going to have you practice without a metronome, just to free you up. 
you're going to take your time and then as you if you speed it up if you honestly are looking at yourself in the mirror if you're really honest and you don't see the bead starting to lose the floor and stop up in the air you maintain the floor you can continue to speed it up as soon as you see that bead lose its position at the floor you know it's getting better see how bouncy that is good good you just had it you just had a, some sort of well, I don't think you can, it's either an epiphany or it isn't. I don't think you can qualify it. It's an epiphany. Good. You have a new awareness. Okay, so the next stroke would be page 14 of the Murray Spivak Percussion Studio. <coughs> Which one is that one again? Well, that is <clears throat> the single Rademacu. Yep. We're moving on to another stroke. I want to keep you moving through these strokes. By the way, at some point, we will undoubtedly go back, say, because you'll be reading something. It's like, let's take a look at that stroke. Because, mm -hmm. do you remember that stroke? <laughs> right? That'll happen. Okay. Uh, and as you develop more awareness, you will bring new awareness to the strokes that you've already worked on. Okay. So with, this one, so with this one, the first double is kind of the same sort of doubles we were just doing, right? See, with Murray's feedback. It's just seven okay. basic strokes and combining them and, and exactly. So this is this is the chronological order of strokes. And what we just worked on will lead you beautifully into this. Now what I've done is I've marked, I'll show you. I've marked the, where is it? You see how, how I've marked the up yeah. the down with an arrow? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I've done. You might want to do that. Might be a good idea. So that's like the upstroke to the downstroke, right, I guess. It's all the same stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, came naturally to me, if I'm honest. Okay. Once again, as your ability to, to play an appoggiatura improves, as your ability to, to turn an appoggiatura into an upstroke improves, as your ability to make a throw improves, everything gets better. Yeah. You're just getting better and better and better. I hope if you're paying attention. OK, so now and we're in six eight, so I guess we would play this to a dotted quarter. So we have the appoggiatura, same thing we just worked on, right? The, uh, uh. And then we have a, an eighth, uh, sixteenth note triplet. And then we have a throw. Yeah. And there's going to be an up, isn't there? So the second note of the sixteenth note triplet is the up. Happens to be a left. Up. And there's the throw. trying to get back to the floor but you're not making the throw we just worked on notice well there's no accent also to be fair <laughs> you're you're up well, you're absolutely right but there wasn't an accent on the uh oh yeah there was yeah you're right you're right that's good good rap but i will play with an accent I want you to feel the throw. See, in the double round of the cue, he, he, puts, he, he puts a dot on it. Okay. I want an accent. 
because I we're working on something in particular. There you go. Uncock that wrist and to go shoving down. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, if I can nail, if I can nail the, the rough, I'll be able to nail this one easy, man. I mean, it's true. It's exactly the same. I mean, and, and then if you can nail the single rabbit McHugh, you'll be able to nail the double and then probably the triple. And then you'll be able to move on to the compound stroke number two. You see how it works? Yeah. Ah, uh, a little high. Right, that's where, yeah, see, that didn't feel like your earlier meditation of being at the floor. Yeah, you're just shoving it down. Come on, where's a nice, relaxed throw? Okay. A lot of things to think about. <laughs> but after a while, it'll be the same stuff over and over, and it'll become second nature. Remember, Murray would say, I'm not asking you to do anything that you haven't been doing since the day you were born. It's a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe he should have gone further. In fact, at a certain point of development in the womb, you were moving that way as well. I don't know. Da ba da ba da ah da ah ah ah. Let's put on a metronome. Da ba da 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 ba da 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 da. Put your metronome on at forty. Good. That's your floor. Good, Rob. Your baby finger doing in the left doesn't need to do it doesn't need to do this. Mm, look at you stopped at the floor. Look, look at, look at the floor. And you weren't looking, you were feeling it. Good, do it again. Oh, give me a big throw, dude, come on. And remember, there's going to be a certain, there's going to be a relationship between this side of the throw and this side of the throw. Let me throw you have, to, you, have to, you have to have both sides. So if you're only going to come up this much, you're only going to come up this this much. Maybe you'd only throw that much. See? See? See, there's moving around a fixed point. And then I cock. See, at that point, I'm cocking kind of where you're cocking, maybe. See? I'm coming up with not very much, is it? You're really going to find that floor. Oh. There. Now, if I'm going to come up more, if I want a bigger if I want more of an accent, I'm going to come up more and then I'm going to come back down to the floor thusly. So you're going to have to come up a little more. Now that means that you're going to have to pay attention to what Dick would say over and over. Bottom of the bead on the upstroke. We'd be watching video of some well-known drummer who made an educational video and, and the drummer would be going. He goes, do you hear that? Da 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 da. Let's see. Da 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 da. Did it. Da 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 da. Did it. He goes. What's he doing playing on the? It's horrible. He's freaking. Right. We we don't want to. And that would happen. That's what might happen if you lead with your arm. You don't want to rush the upstroke. 
So what is this? Da 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 da. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, uh. See, if, if we're gonna raise, or we're, if we're, we're gonna raise that high, we don't want this. We want bottom of the bead. See, up, uh, up, uh, up, uh, up. Uh. See, as much of the bottom of the bead as you can access, up and down. Right. You have to have the timing right. Up, down. Down. Good, good. Now go ahead and play the stroke. Put it at 40 again. Good. Can you keep it going though? It's a little faster than even 40 might indicate, right? Usually 40 is pretty slow. But here we're playing the stroke, and at where you are technically, it, it's a little bit of a challenge to get all of these parts. Yeah. Uh, at, 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 at this speed, right? To be successful in the execution of the single rem Radom EQ at this speed. But the, the, that's the gig. The gig is to work on things slowly so that we can, we can, we can eventually speed it up. So meditating on all that stuff. It's my, on my left, really. I'm not, I'm not really a match guy, but Take your time and try it again. See if you can play it back and forth at 40. That's it. There you go. I don't hear your metronome, but I see it. That's cool. Now I hear it. Ah. Throw, bigger throw. Come on, turn to the ceiling. Let that thing go. All you have to do is move around a fixed point and then cock that wrist to the ceiling. Turn to the ceiling. Don't lose the floor. There you go. Not bad. Okay. The throw is not great. Not bad. All you have to do is be aware that oh, that's all you have to do. You can do it. Tell your bug, even though you're doing it pretty correctly. It's funny. Okay, move the metronome up. Let's just take a look at it at say 48. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. That. They put the metronome up to a. Uh, they put it up to 60. Let's just see what happens at 60. You can get there. I think you can get to 60 if you spend some time at slow tempos. Now, here's the other thing to consider, right? This is why it's kind of cool to have two see each hand individually. But see, uh, as with the stroke that preceded this, the rough, you have an open drag, and then you have the closed drag. And then you have the crush rough. Right? What, what we're doing right now is because we have to determine how open or closed we want to make these these drags. So we can go or we can I 
go Decide is it closed or is it more open? All, but what I, what I need is for them to be the same. So once you decide, they have to both hands have to be the same. That's the other thing I want you to consider. Okay, all right, good. So you we moved on to another stroke. Where are we here? Let's take a look at. Uh, I want to keep you moving in stick control. Pull out stick control real quick. Or maybe not quick. Let's see how much time it'll take. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you, mate. It's we're on page six, right? <laughs> At 72. Mm -hmm. Okay, go and play that for me. Let's see what it's, it's looking like. Which one? Well, it started at the beginning, shall we? Number 25. Sure. Is the first exercise on page six. Remember, it has two accents. in time with the metronome now. <laughs> Just like last time, you were successful playing this job. Okay? See? It's all it's more of the same stuff. You have a double. Uh, 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 uh. And, and the first double is at this speed, is it an upstroke or not? Uh, 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 I guess so. Uh, 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 see how you can see right into my hand here. That's what's cool about having a clear view of yourself. See, see, you can see. Uh, uh, so it's ah. Look, you can see through my hand. Can you kind of see through? You can see it? Mm -hmm. That shouldn't go away. Ah, uh, 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 ah, 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 there may, may be some natural addition of pressure, even if, if you even want to use that word, but the but your body will provide that pressure without you actually consciously adding to the pressure. The body will work if you leave it alone in a very particular way. All you have to do is essentially do what I'm telling you to do. It all really will work out. OK, so once again. We're leaving everything alone. We have a double that in, at this speed. Now it's an upstroke, right? 
just mm -hmm. like with the roughs or the drags. Alternating drags, certain speed, they do become upstrokes. At another speed, you'll just turn from parallel or maybe up to the ceiling a tiny bit because you don't want the appoggiatura to be too loud relative to the accent. And, and you'll make an up. So you see the, and then you have a downstroke for the accents here. It's all the same stuff. Okay, move on to the on to 26. Let's see what that looks like. No, 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 no. It's cool what you're playing. Maybe you're writing, you know, Ralph Franco's uh, conception of a reinvention of stick control. But that but that's not yeah, there are no accents in the second. Uh, Sounded cooler though. So. And on 26. Good. Not bad. So we just have do we have doubles? It's funny because because we have those singles, so the left, right, and right, left. I was noticing that I started wanted to do to do our I start I started having the tendency of doing the doubles with the wrist as well instead of the instead of the rebound. Interesting. That's all about, but that's good. You're paying attention to what you doing so that you don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So go ahead and play it again. Let's take a look. Is that exactly that's kind of what this challenge is about. To know the difference between a rebound and a single wrist turn. Yep, the other thing, here's the other thing I want you to, to enter into. To your consideration, and that is that's that Jack Verga thing. I mentioned to you, Jack. He's really into. He studied with Richard Wilson longer than anybody, thirty years, even longer than Greg Alden. You know, hey guys. So, and Jack is all about gravity. Really into gravity. See, it says gravity. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not adding any excessive force. That's amazing. You can hear the sound of the stick. You can hear it. it doesn't sound like this. It doesn't sound like this. It doesn't sound like this. It sounds like. Now it might be too subtle for most people to hear, or maybe not. Yeah, see, it's nice and easy. You lift it up, let it come down. You don't have to drive it through the surface. Good, move on to the next one, 27. Let's hear that. Ah, uh -huh, now what are you going to do? It's going to be kind of more of the same stuff. There'll be some additional concept as we go along. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't, don't the rebound start on the on the second beat? Well, we're in cut time, but one and two. Yeah. Well, if you're going to count it as one uh, and uh, if you're kind of counting them as. Uh, 
Okay, maybe I'll come to this. One, Keep going. One, two, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now. Yeah, exactly. Are you going? Are you going? I, I feel like I see this happen. No, 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 I swear, man, no. Okay. Because that's not what we want. Right. See, it, it, that's not what it sounded like before. When you listen back, I think you're going to hear it sounded like this. One and a two. One and a two and a three and a four and a five. What am I doing here? Okay. Am I adding some fingers? You can't even tell, can you? Not big tell. See? Here's here's fingers. Here's not fingers. Okay, different. Do you ever use fingers at all? As, as we go along, way down the road, Dick would say, and now if you want, now you can add, you see, if you know how to not use the fingers, then you can add fingers. If you're adding fingers not knowing you're using fingers, that's a problem. Okay, so, so just go ahead and just do this. Do it again and cup it. Just five. Don't let it die on the surface. Okay, so here's what you're doing. Okay. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it's coming along. Okay, but you're you're doing this. You're landing quite bent forward and open. Is that bad? It's not what we want. You don't need to do that. It, you just. You, yeah, I don't need to end. I don't need to go. Because that will lead to this. Well, this is, isn't it to a certain extent the squeeze release? doing here Ralph but it's, be it's already better yeah no, I'm paying attention to that um, yeah okay you don't need to get to the surface bend forward so that you feel your whole hand open there much more so there you get better okay so keep that in mind go ahead and play this again Don't throw your hand open. Good. Just go for it now. It's already better. <laughs> now remember the throw is going to involve all, all of the properties that we just worked on. Moving around. Fixed point. Then I'm swing and, and not throwing your hand open. And it'll work out. Go for it. It's really uh, pretty I'm close feeling, to me. I'm feeling with my left that I'm helping out with the wrist. And I'm trying to sneakily put the wrist on. Ah. If you're not going to use fingers, you're going to use wrist. I get it. Exactly. Next 
point of the universe and cock the rest. easier than you think. It's not going. It, it, it's just that it, it, I will explain in my brain. I'm afraid of just letting it go and do its thing when it's rebounding. You know, <laughs> it's got like you don't have to do anything, right? That's the point. Of... <laughs> don't have to do anything, right? It's like I feel I have to do something to make it work, you know? Good. That's, 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 that's a very good observation. You're right. Because it should really just feel as much like this as possible. Watch. Now here we're not doing a great big accent. We're just. <laughs> but I'm making the watch. I'm making the motion, moving around a fixed point. Then I do that, and then I just gonna let it bounce. Yeah. There you go. See, it's not as loud and dramatic as you think. But you have to go around that fixed point and then cock to the ceiling. It doesn't it's not going to be too loud. You don't go up too much, but you have to cock to the ceiling. Show me a throw. Show me a throw. Come up a little more. Come on, give me a throw. There you go. Now throw. There. Now let it let that bounce. No, come on up a little more. In order to get PC back up and stop, you can start back up again in preferences. What the heck is this? Is this you or me? Could be me. You look good. <laughs> I'm trying to teach here. OK, so that's what we're looking at. Let's do one more. Let's just take a look at. Uh, play 31 for me. Go ahead and play that. Now we only have three rebounds. But once again, we have a set of Doubles, then a single, and then three rebounds. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. See, it's not, look, I'm not banging the stick through the surface. It's easy. And now, now it really is. It's just this lovely motion. Help you develop the momentum to carry you through for three rebounds. Not bad, not better. It's nice and easy. A double is just, remember the, the gravity concept where you lift it up and let it fall. Okay, so here's what I want you to consider. You're lifting it up and letting it fall. Right? Okay. Or for two knots. Okay, and uh, the throw. It doesn't, because you're not adding a lot of force, it doesn't mean it becomes doesn't mean it becomes this. Whatever, whatever you're doing. There, I, I didn't, I didn't see you moving around. I didn't feel you coming. I didn't feel it. Look, it doesn't go like this because you're not coming up and doing much. It still makes this beautiful motion. It's, it's this. This is with some rebounds. Up. Oh, you always want to lift it up. You never want to wait and feel the floor. This crunched it with you. Stop! You're not at the floor. Just okay, okay. Just, okay, you're gonna just well, yeah, sure, whatever, Kevin. <laughs> no, it's not a big deal. You really you're becoming conscious today, really for the first time, really of the floor. 
Okay, and I'm just reconfirming that. Can you qualify? Yeah. I'm kind of making a big deal out of that because it is a big deal. There, show me the floor. Are you sure? Come on, you were a little lower before. Like there. Now move around the fixed point and throw for three. Okay, better. Okay. Nice and easy. See how the see how you can hear the tone. You do yeah. it again. Do it again one more time. Move around. See, and your elbow reacted just a little. Whereas before, just before this last set of instructions, I saw this. This is what I saw because I said you don't have to play too loud, and so you went to this. This was your version of a small throw. I want your version of a small throw to move around. Raph, stay with me here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Yeah. Keep watching while you think. Go ahead and put, in fact, copy me. Just do this. Go ahead. And see, now we have a new sense of fixed point in the universe, right? Now this is our fixed point in the universe. And we could go up like this, but we can't go up very high if we can't hold the elbow tight. That's as high as it'll go, isn't it? No, no, yeah. If you don't let the elbow come out, that's as high as you can go. Keep your elbow to your side. It, it won't go any higher if right. you're moving around a fixed point. Okay, now let's come back. Ah, is that your floor? See, that, now you have a floor. This is your new floor. We're not playing right now, we're here. Okay, there's your floor. See the position of the, of the wrist? Might even be up a little more. You might be a little already going, yeah. Find the, there you go. Now we're going to go up around a fixed point. Like that. Your elbow moved a tiny bit. That's what wasn't happening. And then you're going to come back. See it? That's your new fixed point because you're not holding a stick or the bead will be your fixed point. There it is. Now do this. Last instruction. You got it. Now you're coming up like this. And you're going to flick. Put a little flick onto your finger. That's it. There you go. Okay, the arm is kind of for don't don't try to do anything. It's just it, it you want it to be more, right? But that's really good. Very good. All right. Thanks, Kevin. You're really welcome. Okay, so I'm going to uh, let's see. How do I wrap this up? Well. You were very much today, you were you were more meditative today, right? So you were very present today. And just by relaxing and accepting the importance of what seems like minutia, in other words, realizing that it's not something to dismiss, but to take very seriously. Makes it makes 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 a big difference. Okay, very good, Ralph. Turn on off the camera.